The big storm I hinted at in the last couple of videos is about to emerge over the Great Lakes in eastern United States, and that means that the coolest air that we have seen so far in months is about to make its way into that part of the country. This video has the details on everything you need to know surrounding that storm system, plus a long-range pattern change on the way. One Nation Weather it really means a lot to me that you are here watching, and it would mean a lot to Weatherbell if you would check out their free trial link that is below in the description to this video. I use the weather model maps from their company, and I think it would be awesome if you check them out, so consider going down below and doing that. Also down below in the comments section, I would love to hear your input on this funny question of the day that I have for you here. Would you rather go without thunderstorms for a year or snowfall for a year and assume neither of these will cause damage, power outages, etc.? So assume that you're not dealing with severe thunderstorms, not blizzards. Just would you rather go without thunderstorms or snow? With those reminders and little opportunities in mind, let's go ahead and get right into this video. Taking a look at the mid-level pattern, looking up into the atmosphere because what happens in the atmosphere determines what goes on at the surface. As we close out this weekend, heading to the start of the upcoming weekend, you can really see the air area of focus that I'm going to be talking about most of this video, making its way into the eastern United States, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, parts of Pennsylvania, and New York, dealing with this big blue blob. This is a trough in the jet stream. You can see those lines really tightening up and dipping on down from, say, Minnesota, Wisconsin, down to the Ohio Valley, and then back up through the northeast. That is your dip in the jet stream. This is our trough and our big low pressure system in the mid to upper levels that's associated with it. Cooler than average air is going to be coming down with this, and in fact, the coolest air in months is going to be entering the eastern U.S. Later next week, we will see a pattern flip though, and I'll be discussing both of those elements of the forecast in this video, but let's go ahead and take a look at the future radar overview for our near-term storm that's going to bring in the cooler than average air, starting out as we go into our Friday, September 6th of 2024 into the afternoon and evening hours. Here is that storm. This is an upper-level low-pressure system that's going to be around the Great Lakes. It is not going to have enough moisture associated with it to do much more than isolated showers and storms over the Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and some parts of the Northeast on our Friday heading into our Saturday. Nonetheless, with some of the daytime heating that's going to form in a thin band out ahead of this front, I couldn't rule out an isolated severe storm in Indiana, Kentucky, and or Ohio and Pennsylvania late Friday, so keep an eye out for that with damaging winds and hail. In addition to that, we've actually got an area of heavier rain where we could see some flooding in Louisiana, southern parts of Mississippi, southern Alabama, southern Georgia, and into Florida late Friday. This area of low pressure and associated old frontal energy is actually going to try to make its way to the northeast. Most models, including this one, your European model, have this happening sometime Friday night going into our Saturday. Notice there's that moisture moving through the southern part of South Carolina, and then by the time we go into our Saturday afternoon, it is on the eastern coast of North Carolina. Between that and our little system, of course, the upper level system that we have to the north. We've got the front moving its way on through. You've definitely got precipitation anywhere from around the North Carolina area all the way on up through Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and into parts of New York State. I think these kinds of setups are underrated with the jet stream energy that comes with them for some 40 mile per hour wind gusts to accompany some of the heavier showers and maybe even rumbles of thunder. So be on the lookout for that. No major severe weather is expected and then we're going to dry out behind that according to most models unless you're along that Gulf Coast region. Let's go ahead and take a look at the wind gusts that are going to usher in our cooler air and then we're going to talk temperatures here for the system as we make our way into to our late Friday, September 6th of 2024 as we go 3, 4, 5 o'clock into the afternoon and evening hours. Here's that northwesterly flow. These winds are going to be really picking on up. I wouldn't call it cranking, but definitely some 20 to 30 mile per hour wind gusts across a pretty broad area from Oklahoma and eastern Kansas through Missouri up to Iowa, Illinois, parts of Wisconsin, Indiana, as well as Michigan. All of these states are going to be on that western side of our cold front, and that means that cooler air is really going to be pushing in, and you are going to feel that as we go through Friday evening. The temperatures are going to take a steep drop, and we're going to go down into the 40s and 50s across a lot of this region by the time we go into our Saturday morning. Here we go. Go through our Saturday, speaking of it, as we go into the afternoon hours, another day of some gusty winds surrounding that upper level low. Anywhere from the Great Lakes near that low down here to around Texas and Louisiana, we could see some 20 to 30 mile per hour wind gusts continuing as this front makes its way to the east. Most of those blue colors indicate the winds that are going to be moving in behind the cold front, but up there you see that little glob of blue in some parts of eastern New York into Vermont, New Hampshire, parts of Massachusetts, Connecticut. That blue is actually some 20 mile per hour wind gusts that could come out ahead of this storm, and that could be briefly warmer than average air as that front has not pushed its way on through yet. Since those winds are going to be making their way on through, we're obviously going to see that cool air move in and let's go ahead and take a look at the anomalies that this front is going to bring as we go from Friday into Saturday and Sunday starting with our Friday September 6th of 2024 with my ONW graphic here you can see that a little bit of warmer than average air is going to make its way into the Ohio Valley and Northeast ahead of this front on Friday that will continue into Saturday over the far extreme Northeast but overall cooler air will already be making its way into the Great Lakes by the time we go to the end of Friday going through Saturday it'll shift further east through some parts of the Great Lakes Midwest down to the South Central U.S. and eventually the peak cool air will be making its way to parts of Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, and Vermont as we go into our Sunday. This is on our Sunday, September the 8th. 
Look at all that cool air, 10 to 15 degrees below average being expected for a lot of the east temperature-wise. In the northwestern U.S., meanwhile, 20 degrees above average. That will shift east into next week, and we'll talk about that. As I mentioned, that is our next pattern flip. Here we go, though. Let's take a look at what the exact temperatures are going to be based on those anomalies I just showed you for the next three to five days, starting with our Friday, September 6, 2024, with those morning lows you can see across a lot of the country. We're still mild ahead of our upper level system and the associated cold front, but here is that cold front. If you're behind it, you're already down into the 40s and 50s for morning lows in Nebraska, Iowa, parts of Wisconsin, into Minnesota and the Dakotas. We've already got those 40s and low to mid 50s here. Out ahead of that front, though, we've got a band of mid to upper 60s moving as far in as places like Detroit and north central Ohio into the Cleveland area, even near around 60 on our Friday morning. Warmer even the closer you go to that Gulf Coast region. Here we go into our Friday afternoon, and you can still see exactly where the front's going to be, shifting a a little bit further southeast as we go through the daytime hours, as you would expect with a cold front this time of the year. Out ahead of it, at least according to this National Digital Forecast Database graphic, we're looking at temperatures surging as high as around 90 degrees, Arkansas parts of Tennessee, and in Kentucky and southeastern Ohio, western parts of West Virginia, maybe even moving towards places like Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, at least the mid to upper 80s Friday. Out ahead of that front, behind it, those 70s, even some 50s and 60s, the further north you go there, um, into Iowa, Illinois, and then up there into Wisconsin and Michigan. In the western United States, we're looking at a very hot day Friday. It has just been so hot with all the ridging, and unfortunately, ridging is expected to plague the west this fall. If you watch my fall weather forecast, that is exactly what you will see. We've got 90s and 100 degree conditions out here, especially as you get into those valleys on Friday. Going into our Saturday morning, here are those lows in the morning, and just look at how cool it is from the Dakotas down into parts of Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin. We've got Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and into western Pennsylvania. Any of these areas, you can expect some 40s to be getting in the mix. Even those 30s up there into some parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, and the upper peninsula of Michigan, these numbers are around 10 to 15 plus degrees degrees below normal for this time of the year for morning lows. We should be in the 50s and 60s still in a lot of these locations. So it is crazy to already see 30s and 40s getting into the picture. Is it going to be like this the rest of the fall? We'll definitely have to see. I think this is definitely a little bit of an anomaly. And the anomaly will continue as we go into our Saturday afternoon. Look at these highs. If you're north of this line, you're north of that dip in the jet stream and you are therefore in the 70s at the highest for your high temperatures. Many spots in Illinois, Indiana, not even touching 70 for the peak temperature Saturday, not even touching 60 in some parts still of Wisconsin and Michigan, even into parts of the northeastern United States and New England. We've still got some 60s around as this cool down moves in. The western U.S. and far southern U.S. still in the 80s and 90s for a lot of the valley locations. By Sunday into the morning hours, this is going to be the coolest morning for some of these areas. And in fact, this could be when temperatures break the most records for record minimum lows, as in temperatures have not been this cool before since records have been kept. Kentucky, Ohio, West Virginia, these are some of the main states where we could see those low to mid 40s breaking those record lows. By this point, we're seeing these temperatures in this area that I have circled actually cooler than up there in the Dakotas into Minnesota. Some of those spots warming back up to near around 50 degrees, but that's still cool as we go into our Sunday morning. By Sunday afternoon, look at the warmth that we're going to be seeing returning into some parts of the central United States. I keep throwing those hints that next week will be a warmer week. This is definitely already giving you that indication with some upper 80s and some low to mid 90s filling in across a lot of this area. In fact, that box in eastern Montana indicating possibly a record maximum high Sunday afternoon. By Monday morning, we're still dealing with a lot of the cool here in the east from Arkansas to Tennessee to North Carolina. We can see some low to mid 50s surging in across a lot of this area. Of course, with elevation there in the Appalachians, you could see some frost conditions, especially as you go into places like West Virginia. Just a, a whole bunch of the northeastern quadrant of the U.S. around 50 or below on our Monday morning. By the afternoon hours Monday, some spots here in the Midwest and into the mid-Mississippi Valley, we are going to be recovering. We've been seeing highs in the 60s and even the 50s. We're going to be back up to near around 80 plus by our Monday. Going into our Tuesday morning, only dropping down to the 60s in some of this region, while areas further east are actually still looking at plenty of 40s and 50s if you go east of Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio, as well as Kentucky, into some parts of the New England region. We're still dealing with 40s up there. The 60s creeping in from the west, I think they're going to become a more common theme across the entirety of at least the northern half of the country by the end of next week. Look at this Tuesday afternoon. You can already see the 90s moving as far north as Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, and into Ohio. So that leads me into my next topic, and that is going to be the warm-up that we're going to see next week. I hope you've gotten the hint that that's on the way by now. Here we go into our Tuesday, September 10th with my temperature anomaly graphic for that time frame. You can see that a lot of the country expected to be at least around 3 to 5 degrees above average in that orange shade. But once you get up into that red-orange, 
orange and then that deepish maroon shade over some parts of the north central areas we're looking at 10 to 15 to even 20 degree above average temperatures there tuesday the only areas lingering around with cool air tuesday really in the southeastern u.s so this cool down it is really going to be a short-lived thing as we go into our tuesday here's a look at the european ensemble members basically models averaged out if you want to think of it that way you can see exactly what they're showing it pretty much lines up with what i just showed you with my own w temperature anomaly graphics this is where i base them off of these ensembles some of the data from the client prediction center also goes into some of my outlooks here we go as we go into our third Thursday afternoon, the whole northern United States already being indicated a week out. I'm filming this on your Thursday the 5th. By the 12th, don't say I didn't warn you up here in a lot of parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, all these surrounding states. It is going to warm up, whether you like the warmth or not. You need to know that it's on the way as we go towards the middle of the back half of next week. And in fact, there's actually going to be a little bit of cooler air moving through the Mountain West to knock up on the door of this. Could that mean we get a little bout of some severe weather if we can get a storm system to move through this? Certainly so. But overall, I'll show you why I don't think that's going to be a common thing, and it's going to be a pretty dry week for a lot of the country next week. Here we go into September 12th through the 13th with those temperature setups. Again, this is Thursday and Friday next week, about a week out from when I'm filming this video. The overall trend looks warmer in fact quite a bit warmer than average across the north central u.s only spots cooler than average down there in the gulf coast regions where we could see some rain and in the mountain west and just like that here is that same window including next weekend though for our precipitation setup overall models ensembles the climate prediction center they're all indicating wetter conditions there in the northwest u.s wetter conditions in the gulf coast but where we've got that warmth this is going to be that dry kind of ridging where you got the warmth you got the dry air so it's going to be some sunny 90s that's for sure up here in some parts of the midwest ohio valley and you know at least some 80s up there especially as we go towards that canadian border this video is really just a temperature discussion there's not a lot to discuss precipitation wise but let's talk about precipitation anyway let's talk about it in the comments precipitate your thoughts down below rain them down on me in the comments section could you go without thunderstorms or snow for a year all jokes aside i'm trying to get to 6,000 subscribers next. That is my future goal here on the channel. I, I deliver these consistent, accurate, and educational updates for you, and I try to put them together as effectively as possible. If you have any feedback for me, always drop that below. My next video will be my winter forecast this weekend. I look forward to seeing you then. One Nation Weather.